So thank you so much and thanks for having me here. That's uh, really great. Yes, I'm working for Ericsson, uh, the organization, and as you say, um, the question is, how do you make 100,000 people move? It's a very large organization, you know, crossing all uh, all of the globe, basically. So I'm here to share with you a little bit about what we have been doing as it comes to cultural transformation. As you were saying, so maybe maybe I don't need to speak so much and say so much about uh, Ericsson as an organization, but um, I'll start with myself, uh, first of all. Uh, so um, I've been with Ericsson for about seven years, uh, many years in in uh, in well in the people function in different organizations. But I think what I wanted to just put out here straight away, because I think it also connects to what we're doing in Ericsson, and that is my own personal motto is really to always see the possibilities and kind of look at what are the you know uh, options forward and sometimes maybe trying to reach what may seem unimaginable, but kind of having that um, that view that that's a little bit about myself. Now, if we then uh, Ericsson as an organization, I think that as as you were saying, maybe everybody knows uh, about it. It's a very large organization. Of course, it's a, it's a kind of a world leader in that information communication technology space. Um, maybe not everybody knows, but I mean, it's a very old organization. It's been around for many years, 145 years to be specific. Uh, and it's really from the start in 1876, it's all been about innovation. That, that is at the core of, of what we do. And um, if we um, think about, uh, you know, size, we were already mentioning those 100,000 people. And to, to be more specific, actually, we're just above that 100,000 people across many countries and, and locations. And we serve customers in 180 locations across the world. Um, I would say that uh, it's a complex organization. It's an organization that is also in a business that we need to to go with you know the times and where it takes us i think that when we look at um you know uh, our vision i think that um you know, we can connect that to where are we today in the world? We talk about a VUCA world. We talk about everything that's happening around us. And, and we really want to be there to, you know, use technology for good. Um, and as you see on here, our vision as an organization is really, you know, to, to create this world where limitless connectivity improves lives. So making things better for people, redefining business, you know, doing things differently maybe, and pioneering a sustainable future, which I think is also really kind of there at the forefront. We talk a lot about environment. So if that is our vision and, and you know, what we want to see, then the question is, OK, so, you know, how can we reach our strategic priorities as an organization? And uh, I, I just put this on here because I felt that this is really critical about the things that we're going to be talking about today or that I'm going to be sharing, and that is what we think is really important. And, and if you listen to our CEO, Barry Ekholm, he says, well, to succeed as an organization and to reach our strategic priorities, we just need to focus on two things, our people and our customers. So if we talk about our people and how we operate our business, um, as I was saying, I mean, this organization is you know, quite old. We've been around for some time and realizing that things change and we constantly need to re-innovate ourselves and, 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 and maybe change our ways of working or you know, strengthen those things that are good and maybe you know, leave and, and, um, and leave behind those things that are not working. What we did as an organization is to look at employee surveys, have focus groups, discussions in you know, the executive team, talk in the leadership teams that we have. So in collaboration with all our people, we identified, so what are those behaviors and mindsets and practices that are most important for us in order to reach our strategic priorities and, and really enabling us as an organization? I think that some of you have seen, I mean, Ericsson as an organization, as many other organizations, there's been ups and downs. But what we did, and this goes back to mid of 2019, we identified those behaviors, mindsets and practices that we felt this is really critical. We want to make sure that we really exhibit this in all our people and ways of working. And that's what you see here in front of you. 
So when we talk about our culture and what we want to kind of be known for and how we want to act between ourselves and, and to the external world, we said, OK, so we want to make sure that there's cooperation and collaboration. We work together. We show empathy and humanness. We care for each other. We respect each other. And I think that that particular one could not have come at a better point. I think that this is something that's always been important for us. But thinking about the times that we went into um, during, you know, the COVID times. Having that as kind of a key element of what we want to see in our people and how we act towards each other. The third one, executing speedily, of course, to be there to kind of, you know, be delivering in, on our needs and so forth. But then also fact based and courageous decisions. So taking those tough decisions when they're needed for and then to have a speak up environment. And I think sometimes when we talk about speak up and we've all kind of seen the work, I guess, by Amy Edmondson and and, you know, creating like the psychological safety and so forth. I think that that is also an area there where we want to make sure that people are not afraid of speaking up. So, so those were the five focus areas that we identified. So, you know, we want to make sure we were not saying that this is not there, but we wanted to make sure that this is live and out there and, and really kind of happening in the organization if we talk about a culture. So let me share with you. So of course, into this, so from identifying those areas into actually where we are today. So if I say that we started with the first initiatives around this kind of identifying um, the the areas, but then also being out in the organization and communicating around them takes us back to mid 2019 when we started really actively working on this. So so let me just share then as OK, so what's the learning here? So if you want to make those 100,000 people move and and you know behave and and show those practices, what is it that we've learned? Well, I'm going to talk through each of them, but these are kind of the highlights. So connecting strategy to everyday business. So so connecting these the, the culture that we you know the focus areas to the strategy and everyday business to use the selected methodology. To think about the communications, how do we do it? Be bold, be different, be agile, so think in new ways. Be don't be too set in a way of working from the start working with leaders, change agents, and then having a dedicated project team. So if we start with the first one then, I think that is super critical. If you're thinking about and if you're looking to create or nurture or establish a certain culture, of course we talk about this is how we behave towards each other, but I think it needs to be super well connected with kind of the what. What are we? What do we want? What do we want to achieve? It's about the how. How do we do it? And having that clear linking to business strategy, kind of driven from the top, I think that's so critical. One of the things that we've done, for example, in one of the units, uh, that is to we were doing strategy workshops talking about the talking to teams in teams about what are our priorities where do we want to be where do we need to be but then we didn't talk so much about the behaviors what's going to bring us there so by integrating and now this is the third year or fourth year actually where we're kind of connecting culture into that strategy piece and this has been really successful in the way of connecting you know this is what we need to deliver and then talking about the how connecting it straight away so it's not something separate it's not a program that's living its own on its own but really integrated into strategy and business the other thing that we chose to do is to use a specific methodology so one of the things very often we talk about, oh, there is a problem area. We kind of talk about a culture or a change transformation and we kind of go into the mode of what's the problem? Let's fix the problem. What we chose to do is to use the appreciative inquiry model and you can look a little bit more about this on the on the on Google that unless you are um, so much um, aware about it, but this is really about amplifying what works. So look for when are the good behaviors happening? When are we successful? How can we apply that 
into new areas. Try experimentation. So really kind of looking into what are the opportunities and get the laser focus on when it's working and then try to nurture that and create ripple effects into other areas that may not be working as well. Of course, we often talk about communication. But I think here again, connecting with not just a standalone. This is, you know, Ericsson on the move five focus areas only, but really again, connecting it to everyday business, having that holistic communication across the whole organization, multi-channeled, repetitive, consistent, which is of course regular communication methodology. But I think the key here is to really have it integrated. So it's not something that's standalone, something totally separate that people feel like, okay, I don't have time for that. I need to attend to business. This is about business. It's about how you do the business. So it's integrated in your day-to-day -day work. Then I chose here to say be bold, be different, be agile. So when we started out, of course, we had plans and ideas about doing workshops for leaders, first of all, and then rolling out to all employees and so forth, but constantly being willing to reevaluate and reinvent and maybe changing. I think one good example here is that we started this out pre COVID. Of course, we could gather all leaders into classrooms or people and, and have these conversations very quickly. In just a few days, we switched all of the activities into remote and you know, just like we're doing now, sitting here speaking across MS Teams. So transferring quickly over, looking at what works, what needs to be reevaluated. So constantly having that, asking questions, reevaluating how we are rolling this out, how successful we are in creating the change. And then also starting with leaders. So we say very clearly in Ericsson that leaders are at the forefront. They are the role models. Those are the people who the rest of the organization is looking up to. So they need to be equipped first. They need to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we are doing it. Also looking at other groups like change agents. Next then, and the final one that I want to highlight is have a project team. I think that this has been really critical. So having one project, one team that works across the whole Ericsson organization, holding things together. Now, of course, this is they do super work, but of course, then it's linking out to all the different units, but keeping things together, making sure that there's a timely delivery and that we have a, you know, one common communications, etc. So that I think is some of those cre key and critical things uh, that we've identified as we've now been on this journey since I say June 2019. So then the question of course may be okay, so what is the pro progress that we see here? I think that it's quite clear that when we talk about, so as, as I said, first we, we targeted leaders. So they need to know about this, they need to understand it. And, and one of the things that we worked a lot with and we, we do work a lot with is, as I said, experimentation. Experimentation is about trying maybe some new things out. If we want to encourage the speak up culture, so as a manager, how am I doing that with my team, with my unit? Um, maybe I need to, you know, want to do some things differently. So we asked leaders after being part of, of, of this workshop. So actually we had a training that we did for all leaders across the organization. So about 7000 plus leaders and um, and the outcome from that was that actually if they hadn't already done experimentation before testing and trying new things out, they said after being encouraged to do this, they started doing it. And I do want to reiterate that the workshops that we did with leaders, this was not a regular training to go in and to sit down and kind of be, you know, taught something. Actually, they were very active. The bulk of those workshops was about them creating the content. We gave them some questions to reflect on and so that already then and there they were to be equipped with what do we want to achieve and what are those focus areas and what does that mean for you? How can we all make them come alive? 
another aspect that I that I do want to highlight is that units where we see a little bit higher engagement and involvement is where we've had some kind of formal activity some kind of activity where we're kind of connected and made it clear what this is all about. So that's that's quite um, quite clear. And so then you may ask, so how do we know that? Well, we have this employee engagement survey that we do regularly. Um, and from that, we were asking questions around these areas. You know, do you know what this is? How well are we doing these different things? And just now, actually, we're also starting to ask, so what is the impact that you're seeing from this focus? So I think that, of course, the journey is still going on and we keep kind of measuring and we're looking to see how this is being adopted. And at the end of the day, of course, it's about do we see these behaviors out there? Do we see it happening? But of course, you can imagine from you know, uh, an organization that is this large and spread all across, that is a journey and that is a journey that continues and we need to keep being innovative about how we reach out. And something that we've seen clearly is that if we are more targeted and make this connected to the everyday life of the employee, then it's much more easy to kind of adopt Maybe it's a new way of working or it is kind of reiterating something that you're already doing, doing more of it, uh, but it's a journey and it and it continues. Um, and of course, well, I think we all know, I mean, we are uh, in this field of of maybe people, um, talent and so forth, uh, forth. And we know that, I mean, culture change doesn't happen overnight, right? It's it, it's a journey. It's not a place that you arrive at. We constantly need to work with it. But I think if we go out and if we look at, um, of course, um, we, as I said, we have our employee service and we can see that many people, they know what it is. And now we're starting also to see the impact of, um, you know, the efforts to actually increase behaviors, you know, having this mindset and having this way of, of working. I do want to reiterate, of course, it's not like we didn't have it before, but it's making sure that the whole organization across all functions, all geographies show and exhibit those behaviors and as I said ways of working as well and I think that um, you know I just wanted to kind of touch on and show to you that I mean if we talk about our purpose as an organization and connecting it back again to my, my own personal kind of motto is kind of seeing the possibilities I think that it's so much connected to what we want to achieve here and I think that also having that passion for working with this also kind of you know goes into work but our purpose as an organization creating connections that make the unimaginable possible so again it's kind of that innovative approach and again I think it's connected to the focus areas how do we want to see people how do we want to be working together. So I think that that is basically <laughs> what I wanted to share from um, from uh, maybe slides or, or um, content point of view. So um, yeah, that's uh, I think uh, a bit uh, maybe quickly, of course, there's so many things to say. There's so many things that I would like to to share, of course, around it. But uh, yeah, maybe there's some reflections from your end. Yeah, great. No, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, I was just saying in the in the chat and the questions that, you know, we use this term cultural transformation a lot in HR, but yes. what does it really mean? You know, how do you make it tangible? And um, so I, I think that would be a nice place to start. So what's your tips in in helping describe it and kind of bring it to life for people and 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 make it kind of very practical and real um and then we've got some great questions coming in from the audience so i'll get on okay. to those as okay, well great. So start with that. <laughs> great i think i think that one challenge is often that it sounds like a buzzword it sounds like something that's so like so what is that i think that when we talk about cultural transformation i think it's important to kind of connect it to and that's what we say well that's like our everyday life Right. So, I mean, how is it working for us? So when you come into work or well, I guess in today's world, we're <laughs> sitting in our homes, you know, pulling up that PC and or laptop, you know, it's like, so how is it? What is your experience? I think that 
I mean, that of course, maybe that, you know, that's the culture, but culture transformation is, of course, to kind of identify. So how would we like that to be? And I think that we are very clear in our organization. Well, this is how we would like for things to be. It doesn't mean that we are perfect. Uh, in, in every corner of the organization and live all of these things, but that's what we want to strive for. So it kind of gives that guidance. So I think when we speak about cultural transformation is like being clear about, you know, so making it like more practical, like, so how is it working for us? What does that mean? What is your experience? How is it when you connect with people? How do you engage with each other? And then, you know, really talking about it, bringing it out there and and when it's not happening or when it's completely the opposite that actually, hey, someone actually speaks up and say, well, hey, you know, maybe that's not acceptable or this is how we what we want to see. And of course, there's the responsibility of leaders and the organization, but I think also kind of being clear about those boundaries and kind of encouraging and nurturing the good things, the behaviors that we want to see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And sort of getting people to be consciously thinking about their experience of work each day and and, and then what role they play in making that um, happen just as much as um, people exactly. around them. Yeah, exactly. Great. So um, in your talk, uh, you, you mentioned the use of change agents. Um, so um, someone in particular has asked, you know, how do you identify them and then what do you actually expect from change agents because uh, again we use this term a lot in hr but what you know <laughs> how do we make Ab this tangible <laughs> absolutely absolutely and i think that we were actually quite um, so so first of all we said we're starting with the leaders we're saying okay you are a leader you know you you need to know what this is all about you know we we you know expose you to some some workshop here to really kind of test it out and work with it and then we said, OK, so we want to identify other people in the organization because we know that there are people out there who are kind of maybe those informal leaders or they're just influencers in the organization. We actually went out and asked, so are you interested? Would you like to be an ambassador for, you know, this cultural movement? There were a lot of people signing up to say, hey, I'm super interested. So they were actually by name, you know, people identified, we created forums where they could get together and we, you know, introduced them. This is what this is about. This is what we would like to see that you're doing. And we would encourage them, for example, so we would have like an all employee jam. So actually a live session for 72 hours for all people across the globe where they could ask questions. So this was kind of facilitated, but every employee was invited. As an example, we then asked uh, a change agent to say, hey, you're going to be on there. You know more about the rest of the people around this. Please be more kind of active, share your thoughts, encourage, di encourage dialogue and discussion. That That's one example. Other things could have been, you know, very specifically to like, hey, you know, be out there in the organization. Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a, of a missionary, right? For, for kind of the purpose. Um, I wouldn't say that we put lots of, of 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 kind of like tasks on those people because of course we do realize they have a job, you know, the day job. This is something extra, but they would have said, I'm interested, right? I want to do this. So um, that's basically how, how we've been working with that. And yeah. they are still there. Some have, you know, come and gone and we have new people as those kind of change agents. Yeah. Yeah. And so that so that period of time, um, Camelia, so what kind of period of time are we talking about here in terms of how long this has gone for and how long someone might be a change agent for? So I think that I mean, we started this journey in mid 2019. It's still on. I mean, it's still, you know, work in progress. You can be a change agent. and You can be on there for however long you want. Um, and I, I mean, I do think that over time we've had certain engagements, so it's not like, of course, if you're a change agent, oh, I need to, you know, be on this all the time. But I think that probably most of them who were identified actually back in 2019, they're still there unless they would have said, no, I totally, I, I kind of, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to be part of that. But I think actually most of them still are. It's up to you as a person. You know when you want to come on board, when you 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 want to be off. But I would say that it's not like there's loads of responsibilities. Basically, it's just that you're you're there. You can you can talk about it. And I would say that actually now we've reached the point of 
most people knowing about Ericsson on the move. So I think that the role of the change agent maybe was more in a need earlier. I think that now becoming more mature, it's about everybody knowing, you know, we start with awareness. Now it's about, okay, really doing it. So what does it mean doing these experimentations? So the change agents are still important. And I think over time, maybe it's going to kind of fade away, so to speak. Yeah, great. And so final question um, is that what what's the end game? So cultural transformation, is there any end to culture transformation? Does it go on forever or <laughs> or are you going to are you using certain measurements to sort of say, right, we've delivered enough value and we can sort of focus on other things? What's what's going to be your your way of deciding that you've you've come to a certain point with it? You know, I think that this is something that you know, I think it's similar to, you know, we used to talk about like, wow, um, we start a change project. This is the start. This is the end. I feel like, you know, actually our environment today is just like constant change. So when we talk about VUCA, I mean, VUCA is like, you know, it's just the constant. So I think similar here, I think that now we have integrated this. This is part of the Ericsson way of working. It's actually part of, if you look at our overview of, which I didn't share, right? today, but we talk about a strategy, vision, and how we want to engage with each other. So it's there. It's now it's integrated. I think that uh, it's going to be there uh, until we decide, oh, now we need to shift our strategy, our focus. Maybe we slightly change our vision, but um, as long as we are where we are, it's going to stay. The thing is, I think is key is that um, we are agile. We will change. We will be innovative to say, hey, well, now we need to do now. Maybe we need to focus a little bit more on this particular item and then we're just adapting with that. So I think it's there. It's happening all the time. There is no end, um, which I think is the difference today versus historically when we talked about change projects, for example. So that's why I would say would not even say that this is not a change project. This is an evolution. This is transformation that's just ongoing all the time and we need to change and adapt with changing environments and technology yeah. and everything else. Yeah, no, it's good, good, good messages to, to finish on. So thank you so much for your, your time today. Camille. Lovely to, to meet you and, and to learn so much uh, around um, how to make cultural change real, tangible and, um, and a reality. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me.